Bluetooth vulnerabilities hit Linux devices, the Apt31 hacking group is mimicking McAfee antivirus, and Barnes & Noble confirms a cyber attack. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for October 20th, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to check out the new Teespring store. The link is down below in the description for ThreatWire hoodies for the cold months, along with some other merchandise. I'm excited about the ThreatWire hoodies myself. Also, I am doing another Wi-Fi pineapple giveaway. I've got three more Hack Shop gift cards to give away, so you can get a free Wi-Fi pineapple Mark 7 and free US shipping. Subscribe to my YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash Shannon Morse, spelled exactly like my name is spelled, and watch for details in a video that I'm going to be posting later this week. And now, on to the news. A series of three different Bluetooth flaws have been found and reported by Google security researchers that affect the Linux Bluetooth software stack and could allow an attacker to gain kernel privileges and execute code on a device if it's vulnerable. One of the researchers posted a link to a YouTube video on Twitter that shows how the vulnerabilities work. The problem resides within BlueZ, an open source protocol stack which allows many Linux devices to use Bluetooth functionalities. BlueZ is found in Linux laptops as well as IoT devices and it works in Linux 2.4.6 and newer. The issues are found in varying versions of BlueZ from the past several years, but the newest version of the Linux kernel, which is version 5.9 is unaffected. The three flaws are called bleeding tooth and each one has a CVE to track it separately. First is CVE 2021-2351, which affects Linux kernel 4.8 and higher. It's a severe heap-based type confusion residing in the logical link control and adaptation protocol. An attacker would need to be local and know the Bluetooth device address. Now, if both of these things were true, then they could send a malicious L2 cat packet to make a denial of service or code execution attack to occur. CVE 2020-12352 is a stack-based information disclosure flaw affecting kernel 3.6 and up. This one is based within the A2MP, which is Alternate Mac PHY Manager Protocol, which allows for large transfers of data over Bluetooth. This one also requires an attacker to be within Bluetooth range. This vulnerability can allow an attacker to steal kernel stack information to predict the memory layout and defeat address space layout randomization. And the last bleeding tooth flaw is tracked as CVE 2020-24490. It resides in the host controller interface, which transmits data and receives commands for Bluetooth. This one affects kernel 4.19 and up and is a heat-based buffer overflow. An attacker, again within range, could cause similar issues to occur as the first CVE, like a denial of service and code execution with privilege escalation within Bluetooth 5. A victim machine would need to be in scanning mode for this attack to be successful. This issue was patched in 4.19.137 and 5.7.13. According to Intel, who is a major investor in the open source protocol, BlueZ will be patching these vulnerabilities in future kernel releases. Now, while these issues are high severity, they are not high risk, given that they do require an attacker to be within range of a victim and specifically targeting for these vulnerabilities. Chances of being actually hit with an attack is very minimal, but it's still a good idea to back up and patch. Mad props to my Patreon supporter Joel for linking to this story. According to reports by Google's security team, Apt31, the Chinese hacking group who has been mentioned on ThreatWire many times over the past decade for their state-sponsored attacks, is now targeting victims by posing as McAfee antivirus to send phishing emails in an attempt to get unsuspecting targets to download malware on their machines. The threat analysis group at Google made an update to their reports from earlier this year saying Apt31 was attacking Joe Biden's presidential campaign staff by sending these emails but they have now resorted to this new tactic 
as so far, the phishing attempts have failed. The hacking group has continually tried to get victims to download malware that is being hosted on GitHub, written in Python, and controlled using a Dropbox storage server. Since they are using popular hosting services, it was harder to detect the phishing campaign. If successful, the malware would allow the attackers to steal files as well as execute arbitrary commands on the victim machine. Apt31 used a legit version of McAfee to hide behind while simultaneously installing malware. Google has reported these findings to the FBI for further investigation. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these amazing fur baby photos from my hush puppy perk level patrons. Thank you so much for sending them in. They're adorable and I love these new ones awesome. I love them. Keep them coming. Also, a new perk has been added. Patrons now get access to a discount code for the Hack5 shop. Check out this month's discount code over on the Patreon page. Every few months, a new one will be generated and it may include different discounts or freebies. So make sure to keep an eye on the page for updates. And I did want to thank the Hack5 shop for making this happen. And as always, you can find all of those perks, including that one on the Patreon page. Thank you so much to... That was my cat. <laughs> Thank you so much to my patrons. I appreciate your support. <laughs> if you hear my fur baby, it's because she really wanted to come in the studio. That's why. Last weekend, Barnes & Noble was affected by an outage across their different platforms, which many customers reported affected their ability to access Nook libraries, purchases, and just plain be able to log in. According to the register, this also affected some cash registers at physical stores. Barnes & Noble partially restored their systems on Tuesday and they acknowledged the downtime on Wednesday. At first, the company reported the outage was due to a system failure, but they later reported the true cause. It was a cyber attack. ZDNet reported this was caused by an attacker who gained unauthorized and unlawful access to certain Barnes & Noble corporate systems. Now, while the company's response was slow, what's worse is that customer data may have been exposed, including email addresses, billing and shipping addresses, telephone numbers, and transaction histories. Now, the company stated that they did not have evidence of data exposure, but they could not rule out the possibility. It's very vague. They also stated that no financial data was exposed. Barnes & Noble has not reported how many customers could have been affected. Before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Deadpaul77, Mike H, Review Mick Review Face, Jonathan A, Renee P, William L, Jerome P, Radiation Cowboy, Steve Barat, Bo S, Pretty Fart Smeller, <laughs> who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you to each and every one of you, and I love your screen names. They are so much fun to say out loud. You are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.